Hi everyone, I'm back today to finish colouring this page in World of Flowers by Johanna Basford. It's the page that I started to show you how I use Faber-Castell connector pens with water and watercolour pencils. And I've decided that I will go ahead and finish this page and I would record while I do it so that you can see the decisions that I make to finish the page. Just a recap of what I've been using so far. Um, the Rembrandt, Lyra Rembrandt Aquarelle pencils. I only have five of those. I purchased them open stock just to try how they are. And I'm not sure if I will bo actually buy any more of those at this stage or not. I do have quite enough pencils already. I also used um, the Derwent watercolour pencils, which I, I used the jade green and the zinc yellow, and I'm going to introduce turquoise green. I used the connector pens on camera, which are Faber-Castell connector pens. And since I did the video, I have purchased this packet of Milan water-based markers uh, set of 50 and they're very much budget student grade felt tip marker pens they have a nib that's really similar to the uh, crayola super tip nib and i've used those three colors um, around the page just down here and some of the flowers before i started to film so at this point i'm going to try and stick to this color palette it's very limited but for the purpose of uh, showing you how I make decisions and actually use the materials. It's probably enough colours to get started and we'll see how it goes. I can make decisions as I go along. So I actually do rather like the way that the fluorescent yellow is looking so I really want to keep that as a feature of the picture. I decided because of all the yellow up here that um, I wanted to try and sort of keep that flow coming down and around that I'd keep this side a little bit darker. So with that in mind, I will use this turquoise green um, as my paper towel there, as my uh, starting color, base color for pretty much all of this top corner. And then I'm going to bring in some of the deeper colours as we go along. <clears throat> now I must apologise, I do still have a frog in my throat. Um, I do suffer a little bit with asthma and the change in the weather here, um, we're going, well we are in autumn now. The change in the weather has affected um, asthma symptoms and some hay fever symptoms uh, for me, sinus and hay fever. So I do apologise that I keep clearing my throat but I really can't sort of do too much about that. Um, I know it is a bit annoying and I'm trying not to do it but sometimes you just can't help these things. So I'm going to put a little bit more yellow over there but I'm going to tone it down with the turquoise green on there as well. And that really isn't dark enough there yet. So that's sort of a base. So that any, any colour that um, misses those areas, instead of a white highlight, they've got a very pale turquoise highlight okay so that's um, in there now I do have the slightly darker greens uh, sea green and this one is moss green. The moss green might be a little bit too much of a yellow based green. But the sea green has that bit of a turquoise bluish green look about it. So that, that will work well there. So 
So what I'm planning or what I think in my head as I'm doing this is that I'm gradually darkening up this side so that that side's going to stay lighter with the yellow and feed the eye around, hopefully. Eventually, I probably will bring some yellow into this side, but until I've got all this in, I don't really know how it's going to look, so those decisions are sort of made as I go and not really planned too far ahead. See, I'm thinking that this needs to be a bit darker. Now, I'm not sure if I showed you in the first video. I don't think I did because I, I um, have all these ideas and then when I'm filming, the nerves get the better of me and I forget what I'm going to say. But when the paper is damp, you can actually use your pencil watercolour pencil on there like that and if it's too dark and solid then you just come back with some more water and just break up the surface of that area like so. So I'm not going to use that technique down here because I want this corner to be quite dark to counteract that light area up there and I'm going to use the sea green again and get it really quite wet. I'll do some splatter as well for the outside bits and I'm dropping lots and lots of water in here. Now this is what I'm finding with these um, Rembrandt aquarels is that the pigment, although that looks like a really dark colour on the pencil, when I'm working in this way, in this manner, it's actually not coming out all that dark. So it's not reacting in the manner that I expected it would. And what I'm doing there is I want um, the bleeding to sort of go in that direction a little bit like a splatter. So I'm just sort of coaxing it that way. And what I'm going to try here is because it's not really um, going as dark as I want it to. Now, if I was really concerned, I'd have this masked off so that this page doesn't get splatters on it, but it has splattered on there. So when I come to color that page, or if I come to color that page, um, I'll work those splatters into what I decide to do with the colors and um, style of coloring on that page as well. It kind, kind of forces my hand a little bit. Um, but I'm okay with that because, you know, when I don't really have strong plans to, to start with, that sort of is a jumping off point. So what I'm doing now is I'm working into the really wet paper directly with that pencil. Now, I seriously risk bleeding through to the picture on the background doing this. And I, I know what's on the back of this page and I'm not bothered if I ruin it. So I've already thought about that ahead of time. When I'm finished, I will lift this up to the camera and show you just how that dries and what it looks like. So that's that color. I'm also going to bring in a uh, lighter shade, which is, this one is actually true green. And I haven't done this with these pencils before, so this is the first time that I'm trying it. The texture on the paper is different to when I've used my Derwent watercolour pencils like this. And 
and that accidental drop there, but that's all right. I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna go with it. Wasn't planned, but we will just roll with that. And then with the Derwent watercolor pencil, because I've got this sharpened to a point, I'll really tear the paper up if I use that point. So I've got the pencil on its side and I'm just blending that mid-tone out. Okay, that's gonna be plenty on there. And because I've already started to disturb the surface of the paper, I'm just gonna gently dab that very wet brush onto there and just blend it out and just try for some different, you know, different looks. I haven't actually done this before. This is the first time, so it could end up looking awful, but that's the only way I'm going to learn is if I attempt it and see what happens. Okay, that's really wet and I'll let that dry naturally. I have um, had a comment, somebody suggested I could use the hairdryer to speed things up and I could, but it would be really noisy. Couldn't do that on camera. And because I have such limited um, technical skills, I'm trying to do this all in uh, one take as much as I can without stopping and starting. So um, that is one of the contributing factors to not using the hairdryer to actually dry that quicker. And I like the splatter, but I don't feel like I've got enough. So I'm going to do a bit more splattering. And we've got that, that bottom corner finished now. So we'll see how that dries. Um, generally watercolour pencils do dry a little bit lighter, so we'll see how that does dry up. And um, keep going with some other areas on the page. <clears throat> so this eye in here isn't dark enough yet. I'm going to use the connector pen, just make sure I don't put my hand in the wet areas and I'm going to come around the inside of that line and then I'm going to dot to soften that hard edge of the line because I don't want it to be too hard. And then I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm going to get the Milan or Milan lighter colour and I'm just going to blend that by smooshing it. That lovely technical term. And that's worked quite nicely. So I haven't done that before. You're seeing it as I'm learning it. So, um, you know, it can, this could all go horribly wrong on camera. And I'm going to show you that if it does. Um, because I think it's really important that we don't always just show, the, you know, the stuff that works out really well and we're really proud of. If we are wanting to help others learn and understand, then we have to show the failures as well. Because you can learn as much from watching me fail as you can from me telling you what works. And um, you might still decide to go ahead and try that technique and it might work for you. So there are no hard and fast rules. And I think there's value to all of it. And um, that's why I've decided to do this channel in this way so that we can sort of learn from each other, like truly from each other, um, 
for the good and the bad. Okay, so I've decided that, you know, with this being darker, I'm going to start to brighten that up. And um, I'm thinking here, I like, might keep this quite soft going around here. So I'll start to bring some of this colour in up here and I'm going to do some dots for the inside of the flowers. Don't want that to be solid. And I'm not sure how much different this colour is. In fact, they look almost identical. These ones actually feel quite nice on this paper. I did try using them in a, a Amazon printed book and um, didn't have as great success as what I was expecting with them in the on the Amazon uh, printed paper, but they're feeling quite nice on this slightly shinier paper that's in the Johanna Bassford book. Okay, so I quite like the way that looks. It's a bit darker than I was uh, first thinking, but it works. Now, to be honest, you know, this picture is not fine art. It's um, not really the sort of picture I would immediately think, gee, I want to colour that. Uh, but it was ideal for doing the demo purpose with the flowers up there. And I decided that we'll see it through and we'll just um, finish it off. So I'm not greatly invested in this, whether it's a success or not. You know, and I'm not going to open the book and think, oh, I've ruined a you know an awesome picture there so when you are playing about and experimenting it's always good to choose a picture that you aren't greatly invested in um, certainly don't try new things on your favorite picture in a book now I had a little bit of color from there which has transferred onto there but thankfully it actually works and it looks okay so I didn't think about that um okay I think because I've made that so vibrant we still need to keep bringing a little bit extra of it through here to start leading the eye through where I want the attention to land first and I'm going to go around that area so this is my thought process and you may or may not agree with me and that's perfectly fine. But the, the flowers and this eye have become the focus and the rest of it is just a supporting act. So I'm not going to spend too much time putting huge amounts of detail into these areas here because they're just not important to me and how I'm looking at this this um, image. So let's see how this one works. That's really not as dark as I thought either, but it's okay. 
that's the beauty of swatching but I really am you know coming from the fly by the seat of my pants school of doing things um, I think we'll do the inside of there and I don't really want to give black teeth I don't really want to leave it white because I'm thinking I'll leave the majority of the skull white. So I'm going to just go. I don't know if these are meant to be leaves, but whatever they are, we're doing those in the lighter turquoise. And then I'm going to just. Go around the teeth. Now something that I um, forget still after all the years of colouring is that it is okay to leave some of the white of the paper. You don't have to leave, you know, colour every single detail on a page. And um, Sometimes there's more power of impact when you do leave parts of the, the paper white and you can actually make that work in your favour. So that's just another little idea to sort of keep in mind when you're um, colouring a page is that it can be really easy to get carried away and just want to colour every single detail that's on the page. I had an um, Instagram chat with um, Axic Fumbles, Annika, and uh, she was saying that she paints over a lot of background details in mythographic books because she finds them distracting and you don't necessarily have to have all of that detail in the background. And that was a really good point because um, you know it's entirely up to you how you, you want to colour your page. And um, <coughs> If you find an element too challenging or too tricky or just too distracting and you don't want to colour it and the page will actually work better for painting over it, paint over it. You know, that's, it's um, your book. And um, I watched Dee Dee Willingham uh, on her videos, her, her lives, and I think the channel is called Inky Well. And Dee Dee often says that the artist is not going to ring you up and say, hey, you coloured my page wrong, or you covered something up, or, you know, unless you choose to show someone, you know, on social media or wherever, nobody's going to know what you've done. So... You know, feel free to do whatever you feel like in your own book. Okay, that was a spur of the moment decision, but I quite like it. Um, I'm thinking too, like we'll bring some more yellow in. This one is a, um, a lighter yellow, but it's not the fluorescent yellow. And I think I like the idea of having it down here. I quite like the way that this um, lighter turquoise colour sits with the yellow. That's, especially with the white as well. That's like a nice, pleasing combination. I'm thinking with the dots I'll use 
the Milan marker that's not quite as dark as the connector pen. And that page is still so wet there, I nearly put my hand in. I'm hoping that I'm remembering to keep my head out of frame this time. A couple of videos I've forgotten myself and um, the top of my head has made an appearance. So I'm trying hard to remember not to do that. I'm thinking a little bit of yellow might look nice there. Because we've got yellow here. So I'm still trying to um, get the balance right of how much talking I need to do. What is enough and what is too much. So still trying to find that balance for you. I was just thinking that I didn't have any of this colour in the bottom part of the picture, which is why I've brought it in down there, but I'm, I don't want it to be too strong, so that's as much as I'm going to bring in there, I think. Um, <coughs> put the lighter colour there. I think that's a bit too much yellow, so I'm going to go over that and it's, of course it's making a slightly green tinge but that's that's fine. It still works with the rest of here where the yellows and turquoise have uh, blended and I'm going to use this colour in here. At the end I'm thinking that um, some of these details may actually look good with some metallic or sparkly gel pen. So I could decide to do that at the end as well. It's still really wet. Uh, let's have a look. I think I'd like to extend that around to here, the um, washy um, watercolour look. So we'll wet up here and I'm thinking that that little bit of yellow in there would help just to lift this side because it is looking a bit bland there what happens if we put a little bit in there a few spatters and I'll just wipe all that off on my piece of paper towel that I've got at the side here so it's as good as gold again now. Um,
apologise if you can hear my neighbour's dogs barking, but um, they do tend to do that and I don't have any control over them, I'm afraid. And I think I'd like some extra spatter over here. It sort of looks like it's coming out of the flowers, a bit like um, when you have a bouquet of flowers and you get that lovely little white flower that I think is, um, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but gypsophila, something like that, or baby's, baby's breath or something along those lines. And it's the little soft, gentle white flower that you sort of see. And um, I don't know, it some, gives me the impression of that somehow. As I've said before, I tell myself these little stories and I could be just completely fooling myself, but it's my experience. So, you know, I'm happy to let some of this that um, along here with connector pen, I'm happy to let that bleed because um, it kind of implies a bit of a shadow. And I don't really need that sort of strong detail in there. So clean that brush off because I have got an awful lot of pigment on there now. And I have been known to suck the colour back up into the tube of the water brush as well. So I have to always be aware of that. So I think for a background, that's plenty now. And what I'm going to do is wait for it all to dry. And then I'm just going to resolve a little bit more of detail into this area. And um, it's pretty close to me calling that one quits. So I will just take a little break and be back with you really soon. So I've used the hairdryer to speed things up and um, it's also served to make me feel pretty warm. Um, so what happens with the hairdryer and speeding the process up is that it does seem to uh, make the page a little bit more uh, cockled and wrinkled and crinkled. It's got that lovely noise about it now. Uh, I'm a very tactile person and so I, I like to sort of run my hands over it and feel it and all that sort of thing, um, which if I was doing a really good piece of artwork, it's not a great idea because you've got oils and things in your hands that can affect the paper. So being that it's just a colouring book, it really, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so you might be able to see, let me just try and check, I will lift this up to the camera at the end, but all those lovely paint splatters have dried. Um, I did have a bit of a run that went over this way and um, that's all good. So now I've decided that I'm going to bring in some coloured pencils. I have uh, Faber-Castell black edition pencils and I've brought in very similar colours to what I've used already. And I'm also going to use a little bit of the jade green watercolour uh, pencil and I'm going to use it dry. And um, all I'm going to do is sort of just bring in a few little details in the pencil just to give it a little bit of extra added. Um, sorry, I just broke the point off. A little bit of added interest and variety into the textures and the shades. And I decided that I would do that with just the dry pencil. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. Sometimes sort of I decide that I'm going to do this and leave it dry and then I, I come back with the water brush and end up wetting it anyway. Nothing is set in stone. You sort of, you know, you can keep uh, changing your mind as you go along. 
whatever takes your fancy at the time. And just those little areas I've missed. In those areas probably could do with slightly darker darker shade in some of these spots. But it is just a play piece so I'm actually not going to invest too much time into it. These um, play pages, you know, sometimes I take the photo for my Instagram and think, oh, I probably could have done a bit extra on there or, you know, just sort of made some more details prominent. And of course, you can always come back again later at another stage. You shut the book, walk away, do something different and come back to it. You see it with fresh eyes. And of course, you can overwork things doing that too. So, you know, having that little space between yourself and the, um, the image for a while does help if you're struggling to make decisions about whether it's finished or not or whether you need to keep going. And I haven't swatched these, so I'm not sure just how fluorescent this one is. It does look like, I think it was um, touted as being neon, neon and pastels in with the set. It's not as neon as the connector pen was, of course. And I think we'll just put a little bit down there. I'm thinking I'm actually going to leave one white flower up there and some white petals there. Just going to try and grab a deeper uh, deeper Faber Castell pencil. Yeah, that's a bit. A bit deeper for a shadow. Just put a little bit under there. I've actually got some leaves there that I've forgotten about. So we'll bring back the marker just to quickly do that. Because I use the water brush with the watercolour pencils like I do, I quite often leave those finer, narrower details to a pencil because, um, you know, my brush isn't the finest. I could get one out. I do have some brushes and use um, a regular brush with a pot of water, but um, it's that laziness factor again, I'm afraid. The water brush is just too convenient. Okay. And I think we might just bring in, I don't have the Prismacolor white with me. So I'll use the Faber-Castell Black Edition white, but I, it doesn't have the same impact as what the um, Prismacolor white does. It's a lot more subtle. Sometimes where the water has bled out like that and it leaves a bit of a highlight, it's nice to just um, give it a bit of extra emphasis with the white pencil. I 
could also use the white gel pen or the uh, white acrylic paint pen. My personal preference is not to use too much white acrylic paint pen because I find that my eye just gets drawn to that extra strong white highlight straight away and, and of course if that's the focal point and you want that, that's all well and good. But if I was to use it everywhere here, I'd be losing the impact of it a little bit. So. Um, you know, try to be selective about where I use it. Um, and that's my personal preference. I mean, I see people use um, white Posca and white acrylic paint pens to great effect. But personally, I've never managed to get the right balance and get it to work for me. So, um, you know, I'd rather do some subtle highlights with the pencil and then save that for where I really want an impact and um, that has come off you know trying it many times myself and just not liking how it's worked um, not finding a way you know for, to make it work for me how I want it to work so you know with most things that I'm showing you they're only ideas and um, we all have our own personal preferences and you know what appeals to our eye and our sense of um, artistic license. Just thinking here, this little centre bit is not very well defined. That's a bit better. I'll just lightly And I'm just going to blend this out a little bit more. I sort of st stopped a bit harshly there. And the shadow, um, shadowed area was a bit flat. It was all that one, one shade. So just bringing that in darkens it, but also gives it some bit of visual interest as well because all shadows are not black. If you squint your eyes and look at something in real life, you'll start to see that, um, you know, colors are made up of many other colors. And when you look into a shadow, quite often there's reflected light from things that are around it or reflected colors from things around it as uh, highlights. Highlights are not always white. So um, depending on the surface of the object, you're going to have, you know, whatever's around it might be reflected in it as well. So that can always make things look a little bit more interesting in a picture because um, when we're not creating that photograph, we're creating an impression of what we're seeing or what we th we're thinking. And it's, it's all about impression and your brain fills in the rest of the story. And that's why we can all look at the same picture and interpret it so many ways. Because we're seeing the same thing but our brains are all interpreting what we're seeing from what we know our experiences um, influence you know, how we see these things. So there are obviously lots of tips and tricks to um, 
um, suggest certain things and they're all good but you're still going to get somebody who looks at it and sees something completely different to what you were actually trying to achieve and it, that's all good it's it's not wrong it just is different okay I think that I'm getting to the point where I'm risking putting things in the wrong areas. I will just do um, the centre of these little flowers and then leave them as if they're little daisies. <coughs> and I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it there now. So, just a little recap to show you what I used. I've used Faber-Castell connector pen, I've used Milan water-based marker, the Lyra Rembrandt aquarels, the Derwent watercolour pencil, and uh, lastly I used Faber-Castell black edition pencils. So... That covers what I've used and I'm just going to pick this up for you <coughs> and show you some of these little details up closer. So we've got lots of paint splatters. Lots of water effects of bleeding. And that's the area where I coloured with the pencil, watercolour pencil directly onto wet paper. And you might be able to see that it's given the surface of the paper a very different look. And the paint splatter has gone right over the centre of the book. I think I mentioned in the first video that I did about exploiting these and I didn't actually show you but what you can do is get a dry dry pencil either a coloured pencil or just even your dry watercolour and if there's little splashes or marks that you really like you can just firm that up with a little bit of um, pencil. Maybe just show you this one over here. I'm barely touching the pencil to the paper. What that has done is just firmed up the, the hard edge where the watercolour had dried. And that just makes it look, you know, like a little feature on its own. So thank you for joining me again, keeping me company. Um, I hope that you know this page has been useful to show you from start to finish and in all reality I probably would not use quite so many different techniques on one page. Um, I probably would not use quite so much of the, those different techniques in one page as a rule. Um, you know, this was a demonstration to show you some different ideas, but, you know, it still has merit in itself. I'm, I've finished another page now and um, it's completed. And um, it just gives you an idea of some of the techniques um, that you can employ to lead the eye around your picture and get a different effect. So... Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you would like um, 
demonstrated and perhaps explained in a uh, better way and um, I'll be happy to try and help out if I can. So I'll say goodbye for now and I'll see you in the next one.